Joining me today is Ryan Lesan, and she is a Master Your Mindset coach. And we're going to be talking about three essential tools to advance your professional dreams. But before we get into the conversation, I have to give Ryan a moment to shine. Tell us more about yourself, anything you'd like us to know. And thank you so much for being here with me today. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, CJ. It's really awesome to be here with you and your amazing listening audience. It's, it's truly an honor. I'm so excited. So um, who am I like, in terms of shining? Um, mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Like a moment to really shine my light. So I am a brilliance activator. At the very core of what I do, I actually help people to um, turn on. The light is already there. Yeah. I help them to value their value so that they can own that light. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's taken me 43 years, 44 years, and I'm 44 years old to really mm -hmm. walk in that. And I have to like decide to walk in it every single day. You know, yeah. um, I am my own best client. I can't walk away from that even as I shine my own light. So I understand what it's like to be riddled by the mindset of imposter syndrome, perfectionism, and distraction distractionism. I know that weight all too mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it is an everyday decision and like micro moments to decide internally, because that's where it, that's where the shine comes from. I mean, lots of people I think every day would say like, oh, Ryan, you're shining, you're shining. But mm -hmm. that's because um, I'm a high achiever and I've been highly socialized and all the things, all the things that you're listening audience is also. Mm -hmm. And people tell them, <laughs> you're shining, sister. And inside, she may be, you know, like me so often like, oh, am I like what's <laughs> happening on the inside? You know what I mean? And that's because there are ways of perceiving yourself that are quite frankly, like really unhealthy. So I am a brilliance activator. I'm a healer. I'm a coach. I'm a teacher. Um, I am a lover of black women who are ready to put down the mask of I have to be all to all and I have to work twice as hard and expect half That's, and say, yeah. I'm going to sit with myself and I'm going to do the work mm -hmm. and I'm going to come out on the other side every time knowing more about myself. And that takes courage. And so that's me. I'm like that chick who <laughs> is so passionate about it. I've read like 20, 30 books this year alone oh, wow. about um, personal development, about spirituality, about leadership, about business, about um, the subconscious mind. That's who I am. I, I live it. I breathe it. I love it. I'm a nerd about it. And I really want to help us break out of these mindsets that hold us back. Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you That's for the am. intro. Thank you. Thank you for sharing and just owning it. Like I can just tell from when you're sharing. Right? It's <laughs> like you said it took, you know, 44 years to, and it, but it's a daily, it's <laughs> every day. It's every day. Yeah. Hey, I get every it. Day. Every day you got to yeah. show up and, and just make the decision. I love that. You make the decision yeah. to take up space and to shine. I am here to just cheer you on. Um, so in your journey and taking the 44 years, and I yeah, love to ask right. this question, the transition story from employee mm -hmm. to entrepreneur and knowing that as, you know, a black woman, as a woman of color, it takes a little bit extra for us to make mm -hmm. these decisions for ourselves mm -hmm. and to really mm -hmm. own and to take up space. What was mm -hmm. your journey, your experience like? Share yeah, no, I appreciate please. that. I appreciate that. And as I, you know, share very share and really mean that took 44 years. There are a lot of those micro moments that you are hitting on because you're such a beautiful interviewer that's going to really highlight there have been watershed moments where it has been like, oh, yes, owning it, Ryan. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then, it, then, then, then it becomes that's the new normal. And now what from here, right? Mm -hmm, so it becomes mm -hmm. then scary again. Yeah. And then the cycle continues. So what is that moment of real triumph? for me mm -hmm. when I stood in my brilliance around my business. So yeah. I had started my business in 20, 
12 as a passion project. Okay. And it was the intersection of a couple of different things. I was in graduate school. So I was in, in, I was in graduate school for public relations and communications at Georgetown. And it was a wonderful program. And at the beginning, middle and end of the day, it was really like a very high level book club where we had these, you know, best practice texts that we were reading from. And our professors were leading us, guiding us through a very high level, in-depth conversation. And we did projects around these best practice books. Mm -hmm. And so I was, and this was my jam. I loved this. So I really took this idea of like business principles, leadership principles. I was teaching this in my nonprofit as well, that I was, um, that I was a part of a leadership team for. And that was what I was doing for my nine to five. And I was really loving this idea of taking information and disseminating it to like my network of friends, like this kind of empowerment information, kind of like a high level book club. So I also love the idea of brunch. And so I brought forward this idea of Inspire Sunday Brunch. And I was the speaker at this Sunday brunch. And I invited my girlfriends and I did an empowerment workshop in 2012. And originally I didn't think I was going to be the speaker, but I wound up being the speaker at my event. And this launched Inspire. So Inspire was in the background for a good while. And actually for about three years. And I was in a nine to five. As I said, I was um, an executive at a nonprofit, very meaningful to me, the work that we did. Um, And I had been there for a number of years. It was a lot of significance. However, and listen, this is I say this after, you know, having processed um, my own experiences right. and really looking back on it with, with wisdom. So, so I want to say that I say all of this, like, not just with tact, but with wisdom, with, with real wisdom. Because what I recognize now is I had outgrown my nest. It was very okay. uncomfortable. And what that looks like is oftentimes bucking against the system. It is feeling undervalued. It is feeling like you are working twice as hard and expecting ha- and seeing it and yet staying. Yeah. So this is the yep. thing. Yeah. And yet staying. <laughs> okay. And yet staying and then like begging for more, begging to be seen, begging for a seat at the table. When you have a seat at the table, it's like you are the table <laughs> and you're begging. So I was, I was there. That's what I was doing. And I yeah. found myself doing that. And I had something that a, a virtual mentor of mine, when I say virtual, I've never met this person, but I have done a deep self-study of his work. His name is Michael Gerber, small business guru. He has written a book, several books called the uh, main one is um, The E-Myth Revisited, fabulous business book. Michael Gerber says that so often entrepreneurs come into their place of work and they look around and they say... <laughs> I am smarter than these people. I can do this better than these people. I'm going to take my energy and I'm going to go someplace else. And we have what he calls an entrepreneurial seizure. Well, I had that in 2015. Okay. I came in and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I told my husband, I'm not doing this. Inspire something that I think I can take someplace. But more than I, and it was a very strong passion and vision I equally knew I'm not staying here. I'm yeah. not staying here. I'm yeah. not staying here. And I put in my rec- resignation. I just knew I'm not staying here. And that was just, that was like so clear. So that was my entrepreneurial seizure. Now I say that because then I looked up and I had what's called now a business. Yeah. And I had no idea what a business was, what it entailed. Yeah, yeah. So I now had like the craziest of crazy bosses who had to really learn how to, from point zero, point zero, how to shift from an employee mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset, to create something from nothing, to believe in my vision every day, whether it worked or not, to face my own demons Mm. in every single decision I have to make. Mm -hmm. It literally ripped the cast off of what I didn't know was a 
uh, you know, I don't want to say broken, but a riddled person who was well masked, but that's what right. we are. Yeah. That's what we are. We're, unless we have taken the time to intentionally heal ourselves, we generally speaking are riddled people who are well masked and entrepreneurship ripped that off, <laughs> ripped that off. And also because of the type of work I do is mindset. It is imposter syndrome. It is perfectionism. It is distractionism. So I'm, I'm he heavily and highly in it in the, in all of the study and the work. And so um, that was my, that was my pivot. And then that was, that was my pivot into entrepreneurship. And that was also my pivot into, oh, wow, what, what exactly have I done here and learning yeah. to swim? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how did you, and you started, so it, it sounds like it took about three years to actually make that decision from when you started your, your passion project to yeah. saying, I'm done, I'm out of here. Um, and then once you did transition, you left, you walked out with confidence, owning your brilliance, knowing that you were, you were here to make a change, make an impact. How did you settle on what we're going to be talking about today? How did you settle on being able to, because with you advancing your professional dreams, part of that was leaving behind that nine to five setting. So now you're providing, I'm guessing it's something like nine to five women and also entrepreneurial women um, with these tools to advance their dreams because professional dreams are both professional. So how do you how did you settle on how you were going to support support the your clients? To help such them a good question, shine in their brilliance. Yeah, such a good question because it's it's really like a segue into literally where we just left off in the story, which is mm -hmm. in tw and I'm getting like the exact years a little bit, but the point is is that September of 14 or 15 September, mm -hmm. I LLC'd, and I was okay. very clear like mm, this passing project is something that I want to take into consulting. I want to like have a side thing. I didn't right. think I was going to leave. Uh, and this is also the squeezing out time that I was talking right. about. This yeah. was all, this was September. I had gone through the summer where I was basically like, oh, um, excuse me. Like things have got to really change here, you know? And I, so that was September and I LLC'd and I was clear that I was going to work with teams at this time at, uh, around communications, but I was also really, really drawn to women empowerment because that was what the Inspire was. And I thought I was going to do things like um, image consult. So at first Inspire was Inspire Image Consulting when I first LLC'd. And I was talking to one of my best girlfriends, who's also a marketing genius. And she was like, you do, you do more than that you do way more than just image. You really help people with their brands, like who they are. And so that was a real mirror for me of like what my brilliance, what I come to then coin as my, my brilliance and helping people really discover their brilliance of like, oh, wow, I help people do that deep inner work. And I love that. Like it was really affirming for me. So Inspire went even deeper then in terms of like its own evolution and understanding. So it was like September time. I LLC'd, and at the same time, Georgetown was starting a class around career development, and they offered a workshop for a couple of women who were alumni um, launching this class, and it was taught by a coach. This was the first time I'd ever worked with a coach. It was a female coach, and we came in on the Saturday workshop, and the first thing that she said that I remember was, are you your own best friend? And when mm. I tell you, it was like the shame alarm <laughs> went off. I was inflamed. You know, I felt like I was red. I felt small. I didn't even realize how like impactful, you know, that was how, how really berating my inner talk was. So that was, that was another like dive into understanding who and what I was drawn to. So yeah. They offered me to take this class and I now I'm working with a coach. She, this coach, this teacher has now my mentor and I'm watching her and her coaching ability. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I've never even heard of this thing. I've, this is like all of everything I've ever wanted to do, be experience is exactly what she's doing. So that again, like the business is now morphing at this time. She also helped me coach through leaving my job. 
So mm. this is now December that I'm talking about. I was like, uh-uh, no, no. Like I'm leaving oh, to hear. January yeah. of that upcoming year. I now have this business, which is, you know, again, we're going to dive into like how scary that was. And yet it was there and it was real and it was true. And um, I then then went back to back to Georgetown again for my coaching certificate. And that's when Inspire became a coaching business, mm -hmm. really looking at mindset. And over the last seven years with deep, deep, deep work with my marketing, which means deep excavation of myself and then being brave to say it out loud. Um, it's super clear that I'm on this earth to specifically build a business for Black women. The message is universal because it's a human message. Mindset mm -hmm. is mindset. It's science and spirituality at the intersection. And yet, um, I have shown up in this earth suit as a high achieving black woman. And so I am divinely designed to, to help us. And I take that very, very seriously. And that's something I've also, you know, in year two, three, four, really stepped into, you yeah. know, that was a whole nother iteration of like claiming my brilliance because there was definitely chatter in the back of like, with marketing, you know, do you want to be women in general? Do you want to be women of color? Do you want to be, none of that felt authentic to me. It felt right. like, I don't want to be rude to my white girlfriends. And yet when I look at my vision of my business, I see black women in the audience and I see like, that's who is, is attracted to me. And so it took, took some time and coaching on my behalf yeah. um, to really like, yeah, claim that. Like, wait a minute, hold up. Wait, yes. Oh my gosh, this is, yes. And own it, you know, internally. And own it. Yes, like, yes. Own it, you know. Yeah. So there's, and again, I talk about like at the beginning of our conversation, there's just these micro step into's, you know, mm -hmm. micro step into's. Um, and each one doesn't eliminate the fact that, you know, false evidence appears real. There's fear there. Um, so it's, it's, I, and I talk, and I feel it's my duty to talk about that because it can be very easy for people to hear the like, oh, she's so brave, which I am. It takes a lot of bravery. I do not doubt that. And there's, you know, a lot of work that goes into being brave. Um, and that's what I help people do. And, yeah. I, and I get it. Mm -hmm. You're a brilliant active reader. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So, with thank you for sharing your story and just your experience and that you're coming into the person you are and the person you were meant to be and what you're doing now. So an advancing professional dreams. I love that. What what how are you able okay? Two part question. Yeah. <laughs> question. So how do you narrow it down? What are the three essential tools? that we're here to talk about today and how do you narrow it down to three essential tools but i guess you can tell me like talk to us about you know take a couple of minutes and talk about what the tools are and how you were able to make it narrow it down and hone in on it in three essential tools take it away yeah so i want to um i want to answer this in two ways mm -hmm. one i want to answer it in a way that's super simple to say that Everybody, everyone, I, well, okay, let me really think about my words here. Mm, okay. People who have a service-based passion, yeah. people who have a service-based passion, th like let's say somebody um, weight loss, they want to like coach people on weight loss. People want to, someone wants to be a psychiatrist. Someone wants to be a doctor somebody. Okay. Somebody is like the healing arts. It doesn't matter what, how you frame it. Essentially what you're doing is you're helping people to get clear on what they want. You're helping them to get clear on what's stopping them. You're helping them to build the courage to move forward and you're helping them to be confident about it. At the essence, that's what you're doing mm -hmm. so that they can be, they can say, they can do the mm -hmm. things that they want. It's really like yeah. that basic. I say that because at the core essence, it's 
I say that because at the core essence, it's helping someone to realize a dream, whatever it is, baking a cake. Okay. You want this vision for your wedding. Great. I, I can do this. I, and let me help you like crystallize that. What are you afraid is going to happen? And here's what I'm going to do. And here's how we're going to like act. It's the, the same process. So it's not that complicated. And I, I say that to the audience, I say that to myself to remember, it's real simple. <laughs> You're just helping people move forward. So that's essentially, I would say the basis of, of helping somebody to realize a dream. And then I've spent a lot of time getting very specific around who and what I'm, who I'm supposed to serve and how I'm supposed to serve them. And that's when I got into the very specific three tools that represent, if I were to talk about, you know, the, the ultimate things that somebody would need to really focus on to advance their mindset. So let me back up here a little bit, because what I also did, which I think is so critical is spend a lot of time developing who and what I'm supposed to be coaching about. Like, I don't want to gloss over that, like spend a lot of deep dive around well, what do I think people need? What am I learning? I spent, you know, I basically have given myself a PhD in the subconscious mind, in understanding how people falter from their goals. So out of this massive amount of ed self-education, working with my coach, doing the work of like deep dive marketing, you know, that, that core work of what are your core values? What is your brand? The things I also help people do. Um, I came out with my method, which okay. is the three tools. So the three missing tools are one, really supporting people close their confidence gap. These are the three missing essential tools to advancing. So people are stuck in confidence gaps. That looks like burnout, overwhelm, procrastination, all the things, okay? Number two is it's really essential that a person has identified their personal brand. This is what we're talking about, your brilliance. Most of us are undervaluing our value. So it's about beginning to really identify, know, trust, and believe you are the UESG that you can be, so be that thing. And then number mm -hmm. three is actually creating up systems that support a person to live their brilliance. So it's one thing to recognize, oh yes, I'm good at this thing. It's another thing to create a lifestyle that allows that thing to shine. So those are the three areas that I really help people to accelerate um, their way of seeing themselves and experiencing the world and that I think are critical to, you know, advancing your professional dreams. Mm -hmm. right. And of those three tools, which one do you find takes the most work or development to see steps yeah, or, so or results really, or turnaround? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say that it's almost like a triangle, like each is equally, you okay. know, an equal okay. triangle, each is important. However, it would be a triangle that is, is that inverted where the it's, it's upside down. It's mm -hmm. on one of the angles, right? Mm -hmm. One angle is carrying the other two. Okay. And that's confidence gap. Okay. 1000%. Yeah. Confidence gap, 1000%. Because what a confidence gap does is it overshadows someone's brilliance. Someone mm. can know till they're blue in the face. I know that I'm good at this thing, but I believe I'm not enough. So it doesn't matter how much I know I'm good at it because I can't move forward because I believe I'm not yeah. enough for X, Y, Z. And that's, again, a value thing. And a value, when I say value thing, that's a value issue. That's a value um, that is a person, you know, missing the essence of their value. And that's the core of the work. And, and that's, that is, again, the basis of a service-based business is helping people to understand their value, whether that's weight loss, whether that's being a doctor, whether that's being a dentist, whether that's being a lawyer. It's like helping people to really recognize their value based on your particular brilliance. It's all the same thing. We're all literally God's helpers. Um, and that's why it's so important to step into your brilliance and to own it. Um, it doesn't have to be your business. 
And yet it is your light to shine um, and it behooves us to own it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, because I was, I was all curious. And that was one of the questions is like, you have these three essential tools and how are you able to get it down to three? But I now I see when you when you really kind of talk about you describe the three tools, how you're able to encapsulate a lot of different factors that will help the person to really bring forth how you will activate their brilliance because you're a brilliance activated, how you'll exactly. activate their brilliance to help them to advance professional dreams. And confidence usually is, yeah, confidence is key. Confidence is, it's, it seems so obvious, mm-hmm. right? But we, a lot of us do lack the confidence and it is a habit, like a muscle that we have to build to say, I am confident that I can do this thing and I have this worth. And it's, if we're not taught how to be confident, some of us are naturally beautiful. We walk in, we own things. It's just, you know, we show up and, but most of us, it takes some work to get to that place of, of being confident. And in that also being in the space of like the, that professional space, and sharing your brilliance and being able to show up and offer it and see your value and offer it, communicate it. And on the other side of that is people seeing your value, appreciating your value. It really all does come down to that, that confidence piece. This has been like a beautiful, thank you so much, Ryan, but I'm not going to let you go just yet. Um, as our bus is a boss success story and I love listening to your story. Thank you so much again for sharing it. What do you have coming up? What's what's going on in your in your world that we need to know about and look out for from from you? Yeah, thank you. So what I have coming up is I offer a complimentary discovery call for anyone okay. who is interested in connecting on a deeper level around any of the things that we discussed today Mm -hmm. and feel either curious, they feel moved, they feel that charge of like, I just want to know more. I feel Mm -hmm. like there's something piquing my interest here. I want to add that one of the things in terms of how I help people, there's an eight step process. And the first three steps are really to address those three specific tools. And so the first three steps, and this is really what I offer, is I help people get really clear on what they want and what that shadow is. Number two is the courage to reframe that. Number three is the confidence to move forward. And so if someone's curious about learning more about those three steps and the remaining eight, and how to really advance their mindset to dis- to book that discovery call so that we can do that deep dive and talk about how I can support you with that process move forward. Yeah. And of course the link will be in the show notes. So please, 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 please reach out to Ryan. Cause you want to, yes, you want to, you want to, your, your brilliance activated, but speaking of activating brilliance um, before I absolutely positively let you go, <laughs> do you have a nugget to sh- I mean, I feel like it, the entire conversation was a nugget, but do you have a nugget to share with the listeners um, today, just to wrap everything up before we say our goodbyes? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things I love to share with people is to, it's so important to know thyself, mm-hmm. to be thyself, and to become thyself. Okay. Right. And so it's important to know who you are, to be who you are, and then to also allow yourself to become the next evolution of who you are yeah. um, and to really learn how to be well with yourself and how to value your value. There's if yes. that rings for you, like, ooh, you know, that like I talked about when someone said when I, that coach said, are you your own best friend? Um, do you value your value? If that resonates then there's some real sense of, you know, work to do to really value your value. Yeah. I would leave them with that. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for being here with me today and sharing your brilliance with me, shining with me on uh, during our conversation and really leaving our um, the listeners inspired, inspired to really learn how to value their value. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you.